This is how the West was won. Join me and my son as we went on a journey to the North to watch the San Francisco 49ers clinch the West. And we are gonna jump back to the very beginning. Once we touched down in Seattle, it was apparent that we were definitely in Seahawk territory, as you can see from the bus that picked us up to take us to the rental car shuttle. But once we got there, we definitely hit the town to see what the vibes were like in Seattle. We stopped at the famous Pike's Place, where you could see the 49ers versus Seattle matchup was on full display. We also came across this guy. Uh, I actually used this guy in one of our victory posts, uh, vibing out in the middle of Seattle, and this actually turned out to be a fantastic post and content for the page on Instagram. After that, we went to go get some food. This is actually a fire brewing house that we went to go get some burgers, and then we went to the, uh, I don't know what you call this thing, the carousel, whatever it is, the spinning wheel, and we got a look at the stadium. On our way out, we came across a guy that looked, hey, just like me this was the sourdough prospect himself and member of the sourdough squad uh, but also as we were there we decided to go walk around and see the sights we went to this alley where there's a bunch of gum we found this massive popsicle but it was game day shortly after we got some grub and i will say seattle has fantastic food and as we started to get ready for the game, we could see people were out and about. 49er fans were everywhere in the city of Seattle, absolutely taking over. And it was now our time to head to the stadium. <laughs> I like to get to the stadium as early as I can, typically when they let fans inside the gate so I can capture my pregame content. But let's just say StubHub made us about 20 minutes late because they didn't show my tickets in my inbox, but that's beside the point. When we got to the stadium, it was very easy to see that there was a lot of San Francisco 49er fans around. And the 49er fans really made their presence felt. And this is the time where I start to look around and gather content. So this is Nick Bosa, obviously a big fan favorite. It's always fun to watch and see how these guys interact. Uh, I found this guy, not exactly sure who this is, but he was really covered up because it was pretty cold out. You got to see Dre Greenlaw and Aziz Al Shair, two linebackers getting ready and getting warm before the game. As you can see, they go through ladder drills here in the pregame warmup. Both guys had pretty decent games on the day. Here we have Josh Johnson, the quarterback that was signed far after Jimmy Garoppolo's injury, throwing to Brandon Ayuk. And of course, the man, the myth, the legend himself, George Kittle, greeting his parents and his wife and sister as he typically does on most game days. This is a pretty standard uh, sight that you'll see at games, whether at home or on the road, as he greets his family on the sideline. We know George Kittle loves his family, and they always are there to support him. Not only did we see that, but we saw the Seahawk itself. I don't know if I've ever seen a Seahawk in real life. And if you've seen this guy before roaming the sidelines, that is Dr. John York, the owner of the San Francisco 49ers. And he was really cool to be able to try to throw us these pins, which he hands out before every game, and did a really good job actually getting them to us. I spent the rest of the pregame trying to find some content like Talano Rufanga, Nick Bosa talking to the refs. Maybe they would give him a holding call. But the guy that everyone really wanted to see was rookie quarterback Brock Purdy. So we got tons of shots of Brock getting warm, looking iced out in the nice 94 Niner all-white jersey combo that everyone 
loves. But we just tried to get as much content as we could watching Brock Purdy get ready for his first start on the road in his career. Obviously, we know Mr. Irrelevant, all that good stuff that comes along with it and what this game meant for not only Brock, but for the San Francisco 49ers. But it was time to make it to our seats and we were admiring the stadium and the city in which we were in. I was also texted and tweeted from my buddy that, hey, you made it on the broadcast. So it was pretty cool to see our tweet show up on national television. But we couldn't get too excited about that because we know there was a game to be played and this was a epic matchup with all the stakes, the NFC West title on the line with all the back and forth between these two teams over the past decade. We were hyped and ready to go and watch this game for the first time while we were in Seattle. This is where we watched the game from. These were our seats. Uh, actually really not bad sight lines from where we were. Uh, we were pretty high up in that area, but not too bad as you can see the San Francisco 49ers come out onto the field, get all hyped. They were met with definitely a lot of boos, but also some cheers. From 49er faithful there's actually a lot of 49er fans in the stands for this game and they were definitely loud and proud and made their presence known but again typically what the 49ers do is they run to the opposite side of the field you'll get a lot of players who come out and pray you got fred warner getting ready for war and of course it was time for the seattle seahawks to be announced and we got to see their entrance and how that all looked but we had a football game to be played, and it started out as a really nice defensive matchup. We definitely got to hear that stadium noise that we've heard about in Seattle, but it wasn't too long before Brock Purdy and the 49ers offense really quieted that stadium. Brock Purdy to George Kittle with a touchdown. Absolutely beautiful play design. If you look over there in the top left corner, you'll see a fan fall out of the stands trying to get the ball from George Kittle as they try to help him back into his seats. Uh, but you get to see what the expressions are like from George Kittle and his teammates as he walks off the field after the 49ers score the first touchdown of the game. It didn't take long for the San Francisco 49ers to drive down the field and score on this Christian McCaffrey rushing touchdown that really got things moving in the right direction for the 49ers. And as you can see by the crowd that we have around us, had a lot of 49er fans, and they were very happy about this outcome of the game. And it was a fun crowd to sit with because they were vibing the entire time the San Francisco 49ers scoring touchdowns. 49ers Brock Purdy went back to work with the San Francisco 49ers offense as he finds George Kittle for the second touchdown of the game. And they don't call this guy the Yak King for nothing because yards after catch, you're not stopping George Kittle as he walks in for his second touchdown of the game in a game that means a whole lot to these players with the NFC West division on the line. So this is absolutely a big touchdown, a big game, and the crowd was definitely vibing. 49 fans were loving this. But it wasn't just the offense. Nick Bosa got another sack of Rooney after an absolutely terrible call. Wiped off an interception for a touchdown, but the defense continued to go to work. As you got a sack here, I got a guy stand up right in front of me and block my shot. One of the struggles of filming from the stands, but hey, we move no matter what. The defense continued to play lights out and get stop after stop, making play after play, led by Dre Greenlaw, Nick Bosa, Charvarius Ward. And you could see quickly, Seattle fans weren't having it. This was about nine minutes left in the fourth, and he started leaving. The San Francisco 49ers had an opportunity to put this game away, and it was Jordan Mason who sealed the game with this run, almost scoring a touchdown but again jordan mason the rookie absolutely fitting for him to close this game out as he is becoming known the closer or the finisher for the san francisco 49ers and this was the run to seal it as the 49ers went into victory formation and that was it the 49ers are nfc west champs after the game was over the 49er fans stayed behind to watch george kittle and brock purdy speak to the thursday night football crew and cheer them on. You got all different kinds of chants, including BCB, but fans were extremely excited after locking up the NFC West and clinching the playoffs and sweeping Seattle for the first time since 2011. 
making this a mission accomplished for our first trip to Seattle. And it was cool to see the kind of behind the scenes action after the guys are done filming, speaking with the crew and kind of saying what's up to everyone. And of course, old teammate to George Kittle, Richard Sherman, you got guys like Tony Gonzalez, one of the best tight ends to ever play. And of course, Ryan Fitzmagic, all the guys out there saying what's up. And it was just a cool experience to kind of see the guys after the game. And of course, celebrating with other 49er fans as the as we were NFC West champs. Uh, but it was just the cherry on top to an absolutely phenomenal experience. Going to Seattle for the first time. This is actually my first away game. So it was totally an experience that I will never forget. It was, it, I'm definitely going to go again and I'm looking forward to going more away games. But again, just a phenomenal experience watching the team clinch the NFC West uh, and the way they've done it with Brock Purdy at quarterback. Uh, there's been injuries this year. Other guys have stepped up and it's just been an overall fantastic season it's not over yet still a big run left in the playoffs and it's going to be fantastic to see how far this team goes in the playoffs